Welcome to the So Much More podcast, where we talk with people in the custom window treatment, soft home furnishings industry, and so much more. I'm your host, Seal DeGuglielmo. My guest today on the podcast is Denise Canny. She is the owner of Denise Canny Custom Sewing that was established in 1998 as a one-person workroom. She operated out of her first home in Livingston, New Jersey, and then a few years ago moved to Doylestown, Pennsylvania, which is not too far from me, and it's part of how I got to know Denise a little bit. She has served both designers and retail clients. She's fabricated all types of window treatments and other soft home furnishings. Denise is really developing her business and working on adding different options for her clients. She's doing hard treatments now and providing more retail services for her clients. And I really love watching her develop her social media accounts and everything else. And that's part of the reason I wanted to interview her today. Denise's excitement for what she does is so obvious in her voice and how she talks. I really hope you enjoy hearing from Denise today. Hi, Denise. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. No problem. I'm very excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here because we have had the opportunity to meet in person. I didn't know you. We don't live that far away from each other. Um, But you reached out to me and before the world shut its doors, you and I got to sit down with a cup of coffee at a Starbucks and and just talk for a little while, which to me... um, You know, I I have a few family members who say I can talk to anybody, which not really sure they mean it as a compliment (laughs) when they say it, but it is the the part of this that I enjoy. I get to have conversations with people. Mm -hmm. And so I had a great conversation with you and I thought this would be a great one to share with the podcast listeners. So let's start at the beginning. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, um, I am a one-person workroom, and right now I live in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, which is, you know, very close to you. I work out of my home, out, you know, in my basement is my my workroom, mm-hmm. and um, I am currently working with two designers, but mostly it's just been word of mouth um, retail customers. Okay. So, <laughs> how well, long have you been in business? Since 1994. So. Um, I actually went to school um, for retail management and merchandising Mm -hmm. at Johnson & Wales and came out of school and got a job with Kids R Us. You remember Kids R Us? Okay, I do. So I was an assistant manager with Kids R Us. And, you know, once you have kids, retail just, it's really hard, you know. It's hard when you don't have kids, but oh, yeah. And um, so when my daughter was born, I was living in uh, Livingston, New Jersey, and I was, you know, an assistant manager at Kids R Us. I was the only one with kids. And... The straw that broke the camel's back, I think, was the night when it was Halloween night. I was the only one with kids and I had to work. I was so mad. And and I can just remember that day, like, I got to do something else. I I have to figure something else out. So a long stream of little businesses um, along the way until one day my mom had a uh, luncheon with like a bunch of different women. And one of them happened to be a designer working for another designer and said, you know, your daughter likes to sew, you know, that somehow I came up, Mm -hmm. I don't remember how, and asked if I would be interested in making some pillows for them. And that was like the first thing professionally that I ever made. And from that day, that was like the first day or the first job that I did professionally. And it it just went from there. Okay. Before I knew it, I was working for this incredibly talented interior designer and, um, you know, award-winning interior designer. Mm -hmm. And since then I, I started making a list the other night of 14 different interior designers over my past, you know, sewing career that have just like come and gone for whatever reason. Yeah. Like, Oh my gosh, I work for that one. I work for that one. And, you know, for the most part, all ended excellently. You know, Mm -hmm. there was a, you know, a couple here and there, but they were all wonderful. I learned something for each, from each and every one of them. I had a great time. Each one had their own style, mm-hmm. you know, which is really fun. Um, right. Especially like, you know, back in 1994 <laughs> and the early 2000s, I mean, they're, all the trims, like, yeah. that was huge, you know? I mean, trims are still huge now, but not 
Not the same way and not no. the same kind of trims. That you're mm-hmm. absolutely right. Right. I mean, I remember like 90% of my business were pillows. That's all I did were pillows. Mm-hmm. I would have cases, these giant boxes from Harden Company mm-hmm. delivered to my house with trims and it would just be layers of different trims. I can't, I mean, people must have said it spent like over a thousand dollars for a pillow. Wow. Know, all, all was yeah. Sudden. But, um, so yeah, so that's really how it started. And, you know, I've just continued it from there. So from Livingston, New Jersey, 2006, we moved to Doylestown and I was able to continue working, you know, doing the same thing. My workroom is so much bigger than it was when I first started out. Um, which is nice. I have a whole half of a basement. Well, I'm kind of encroaching on the other half, but I've got, <laughs> we like, do that, don't we? <laughs> I just keeps going and going and going. So, so when you bought this house, did you were you looking specifically to make sure you had enough room for your workroom? I mean, it was definitely in my you know in my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew I didn't. You know, I, I would love to have a place, you know, a shop that I could go to every day, but the real reality of it is, is everything is right here. You know, bad weather, I'm right here. Right. If I have to do something 11 o'clock at night, I'm right here. Okay. Um, Which is also the bad news, by the way. It is the bad news. <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, there's only been, you know, I don't know, maybe a handful of times where I would be down there to all hours of the mm-hmm. night. Haven't had that happen in a really long time. Oh, good. I do but like to hear that. Time management, you know, budgeting your time and... I stopped, I really want to say consciously, I stopped promising things. I wait until I'm almost done and say, Mm -hmm. now I know I'm going to be done. But I hate to have that deadline because, you know, many things come and, you know, interrupt you and you can't finish. Mm -hmm. So I stopped promising things like that. Good for you. I'm proud of you. (laughs) So let's back up just a little bit. So you start making these pillows for Mm -hmm. this interior designer. Now you're you're still working or at at Kids R Us? Okay. No, I left. I was afraid of my husband was going to divorce me, but I ended up leaving. And then um, my father had invented, well, my grandfather and father had invented this little coffee maker. So he's like, you know, I want to see if we can get this on the market. So he was actually paying me to see if I could market this item. That okay. unfortunately never took off. Aww. And then I um, invented this little children's toy called the scroll up, which was, a, it didn't take off. It was that to do the craft show circuit. I don't know if you've okay. ever done the yeah, craft I show have, circuit. I have. That's a lot of work. You it know, is a lot of work. Setting up shop, unsetting up shop. Do I have enough? You know, and of course, do I have too many? (laughs) Do I have too many? Do I have enough? My father will always laugh because my very first craft show, I was in tears. I actually backed out because I thought, I don't have enough product. And we got to the craft show, and there was like two people walked up to my booth. I didn't sell any. (laughs) Yeah, but that's that not having enough is this big fear when you do a craft show. And I think the part that finally wore me down was a number of people. I made jewelry at the time. It's funny because my sisters and I did some dried flower wreaths. All four of us made them. And then my two youngest sisters were like, yeah, we're done. We're not doing that stuff anymore. And my sister and I started making some jewelry. But my favorite thing was when people would come up to the booth and say, oh, I could do that myself. It's humiliating almost. You you can, um, but... First of all, we did a really nice job with these and they're right in front of you and you don't have to buy all the tools and all the supplies and all. Yeah. So it was just, we did a number, my, my sister Maggie and I did a number of them and I loved spending the time with her to do it, but it's just, it, it's exhausting and, and time consuming and not profitable for me personally. I know it is for some people, but it was not for me. Right. Right. So, okay. So you, you've, you're kind of going along this entrepreneurial ride here. And did you feel to be home? Yeah. Did you feel desperate about it or it was like, or did you have a feeling of I'm going to figure something out? Yeah, definitely. I'm going to figure something out. And then, you know, it's really funny because back in 1989, when we got married, I actually have a flyer. I was trying to find it because I know I have it that was printed out on like the old computer with the Mm -hmm. little things that, and it was called Canny's Curtains. And it had a picture of like six different black and white curtains that I had like designed. Mm-hmm. And put them on this flyer and said, you know, call me. Of course, I had no professional equipment at all. No table. I had a Kenmore sewing machine. Mm-hmm. 
at the time, honestly, I think I didn't even know how to put a zipper properly in a pillow. Like, okay. You know, but I had worked in a fabric store, so I knew enough that I could figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so like in the back of my head, I always wanted to do this. Okay. You know, so now years later, I finally, like I made it happen. Yeah. All right. So, so how long did it take from making those first bunch of pillows for that designer? Did you start to kind of develop a broader base of products and how did your business develop from there? Oh yeah. Just all over like reading books, the singer sewing books. Yes. I used to get so much information out of those books. And then I went to my first conference, which was in Fort Washington with Cheryl Strickland. Okay. I wanted, I was so upset that I couldn't go to every, like all the classes I wanted to take overlapped. So mm-hmm. I dragged my husband with me. I'm like, you go to this class and you go to this class. Oh my gosh, that was brilliant. I'll go to this class. Um, and I'll like, there were some like Beth Hodges. I have her, I, all of the notes from her class. Mm-hmm. Scott Robbins. I remember being in a Roman shade. I'm sorry. It was a corner sport class of Scott Robbins. And I remember actually saying, you know, do we, do we sew anything? You know, everything was glue and hammers and nails. And so that was pretty surprising, but I did, I got so much out of that conference. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there was another one. And once I moved here at very early, like 2006, 2007, there was another one. That's the one I went to. That was Mm -hmm. my first one. And that was just amazing. Yeah, and that's where I first, I met Stu Moran and my friend Teresa and mm-hmm. Lorna. I don't know if you, my sewing buddies. Yeah, you know. So, um, yeah, that was and and Teresa and me we we're constantly and Lorna having like a local sewing buddy that does what you do. It's like yeah. you know, I need a weight rod, I need lining. She'll come running over. I need drapery. Ox, we forgot the women's. You know, it's really it's worth everything, especially when you're learning things. To have somebody, even if it, even if they haven't done, like if it's the first time you're doing a swag, even if they haven't done them, you can talk through it with someone who understands the perspective that you're coming from, or who might think of something that you won't think of. Right. If if you're trying to work it out, oh my gosh, that's the most valuable thing in the world, I think. And we're so close. Like there have been countless nights where I've been at her workroom late at night. Mm-hmm. She's been at my workroom late at night trying to get some things done, and you know. Two, three heads sometimes are definitely so much better than one. Absolutely. And definitely four hands are better than two. There's no doubt about it. Yep. So prior to moving here, you've been working with multiple interior designers. Um, what has changed about your business over the years? So like, well, first of all, I think my skills have, you know, gone from zero to, mm-hmm. you know, a hundred, but I mean, I'm still learning, you know, like it's still post Susan will post, you know, things on the site, um, you know, doing a, a window treatment one-on-one class. And it's like, I know, I know more than window treatment one-on-one, but I would still love to go to that class. Cause I'm sure I would pick up 10 different new things that I don't. So that's, know. and I, we talked about this before we started recording. You said to me, I hope I'm interesting. I hope I have something to share. And it is people, people who, who come at me with that answer who tend to be the most interesting and helpful to begin with, but it's also your, um, your thirst for knowledge is so refreshing to me because you, you're not new in this business. You've been here for a while and yet you are still so encouraged to look for things. And I think that attitude is so helpful. I remember I mentioned to somebody that I, and it was probably two years ago, I bought Susan's craftsy class. And I think it might've been like a drapery class. And they're like, why would you do that? Well, because I might learn something new. God forbid, I might learn something and make new. Something and something easier. And- yes, and I did. And there, was, uh, there were two things. Susan puts her pins at an angle, and I was doing them straight in, and I've started doing them at an angle. And I learned how to bury my knots better. And I thought that was worth the price of the class alone. I learned more than that. <laughs> but it's also, I, I think sometimes it's a refresher, and sometimes it's, I, I also think about if I'm going to train anyone to, to help me in my business or take over my business, how, how do I train them? 
Cause I know what I, I know what I do. I don't know how to tell people what I do. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when I'm watching an instructor, I think, Oh, now how would I teach somebody to do that? So it's just like the mindset thing, right. but I agree with you. I think sometimes, go, especially for those of us who are primarily self-taught to go back and have someone who's perfected a, uh, you know, a a pillow making procedure or cushions. It's just so wonderful to follow along and go, oh, okay, I do that the same way. And and a little, you know, validation, not that there's only ever one way to do something, but then it's like, oh, oh, good. Okay. I'm going to get faster because I just saw that. And that to me, but that is part of the reason I wanted to talk with you because you are so excited about continuing to learn. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes a difference in the success of some of our businesses is, are we just getting set in our ways and done, or are we still learning and encouraging and and striving, I think is probably what I see in you that I find so fascinating. Oh, good. I'm glad. I mean, like right now, I think the whole topic at hand with me is accounting. Like accounting has always been my worst nightmare in college. I had to take it two, three times before I finally passed. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I am, I am going to get this if it kills me. So I'm, I'm working with Emily at Bean Countery. Mm -hmm. So so after I took that pricing and profit class with Michelle, Mm -hmm. I think that is what drove it home when she asked, you know, take, here's this financial checklist and, you know, I want you to answer all the questions. I couldn't even answer what, what is my cash flow? I I don't know. How much did I make last year? I don't know. I, how could I not know that? Right. Because like my husband would do all my, he just did everything for me, you know, and I love the fact that he did that. But now I'm like, I need to know those answers. Yes. And, and that's um, just to qualify you. And I went to a New Jersey WCAA meeting and Michelle Williams was doing this class for us. And I've taken multiple classes with Michelle. I've coached with Michelle and I still learn something from her every single time. But I think what you're saying is really the the key. You had somebody trustworthy doing all of that for you, but you still need the answers. You still need to be able to, to know, am I being profitable? Am I, am I actually making money at all this time I'm spending doing all of this? Exactly. And it's here I'm paying for, I'm paying for QuickBooks. And even though he's doing it and he's keeping track of it on Quicken, I have to watch my words because I know he's going to listen to (laughs) (laughs) I know that it wasn't done according, it's not being done according to like the workroom tracking, you know, what's cost of goods sold and what's accounts received. Like I, and I just felt like it needed to be a little bit more detailed because there's so many parts and pieces to it our business. Right. So, and I wanted to do it. I want to, I want to learn it. I want to track my expenses myself and figure out the, like my chart of accounts was, and it, I can't even tell you what a nightmare it was. It was all over the place. So Emily helped, you know, sort all that out. So now I actually know what I'm doing. I'm tracking my, I'm not sitting down at the end of the year mm-hmm. with a pile of expenses, trying to put them in order. Everything is attached to an invoice the way it's supposed to be. Yes. Um, what my a concept. Mileage, oh my gosh. <laughs> I track my mileage the day that I get home and it's in QuickBooks. It's a, it's a relief. Yeah. And, so in all fairness to your husband though, I, I had the same thing with my former bookkeeper in that she didn't understand our industry well enough that certain things were not well organized. And I would say, okay, but that doesn't belong there. And it would be sort of like by osmosis, you should know this. <laughs> like I'm, I'm looking at this. I'm not a bookkeeper and I know immediately that's in the wrong place. And what I realized was that she couldn't possibly know it. And I hadn't communicated well with her about it. So those are things, I mean, there's no way your husband could know some of these things. Right. I mean, he did an awesome job about it. But like even taxes, like this year, I want to do my taxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I say I want to do them, but let's see what happens. Right when it comes up, get back to us, will you? (laughs) He's going to be sitting right next to me doing it, but I want to do it. So that's the the thing right now that I'm working on the most, um, trying to become really comfortable and confident in my pricing, because like I said, now at being at that retail end of things, it Mm -hmm. really is very different than 
because there's a lot more cons- consult and time. Yes. You know, it's hard to keep track of. We know that, I mean, you, you said it just a minute ago. What, do we ever actually sew? The, the actual fabrication time is sometimes less than the time it takes us to figure out how we're doing it. And that can be days and days of thinking and, and working stuff out or getting further education before we cut into the fabric and make sure we're doing it the way we need to do it, all of the above. So you're tackling these parts of your business that you hadn't really before. Again, I think that's part of why I wanted to talk a little bit more with you about it. As you started your, your business, like many of us, it was a way for you to stay home. Did you start with a business plan or did, I'm sorry, nobody can see that expression, but that was priceless. The business plan was to make sure that I got a paycheck so, you know, we could put dinner on the table and buy the Halloween costumes and, you know, it was all just like, I want to call it like the fun money, you know, Mm -hmm. and I mean, do you know that it wasn't, and this is really pathetic, maybe we should scratch this off the recording. But it wasn't until this past May that I actually had gotten my own business credit card and and my own savings account and put money away like all these years. And I just did it now. And it's made such a difference. Like I actually have money in my business account that I can pay myself a salary every week. Okay. Like, I'm going to say the exact opposite. I'm really proud of you for doing it because trust <laughs> yeah. me. Yeah. Do the happy dance yeah. because I, I can absolutely promise you that there are people who are listening to this, who have been in business longer, who know they should have done that already and haven't yet. And it does make a difference. There's a confidence in having a credit card with your business name on it. Mm-hmm. And there's a confidence in paying that bill off every month and saying, I'm running this business in a financially sound way and paying myself and doing all those things. And in the beginning, when it's fun money, it really, really is, it's all we can do. We're raising our kids. We're, we're, some money's coming in. We're doing what we have to do. But we do that for so long that we forget that's not really <laughs> the best way to do it. And, but you stopped doing it that way. And that's, instead of being embarrassed, you should be proud of yourself that you did do it. Because there yeah, are plenty of people who haven't. Yeah, it's kind of a, a little life changing here. For, mm-hmm. I mean, so in 2015, there was just like a period of time where I don't know what happened, but I had nothing coming in. My pipeline was empty, mm-hmm. and I just panicked. Like, what am I going to do? You know, my that's like a whole transition where designers kind of were going ever which direction. I had nothing coming in. I didn't know what to do. And, you know, although I did, I didn't quit, I didn't get rid of my stuff, but I took a part-time job at the Gap downtown okay. in Royalstown, mm-hmm. um, got promoted to be a part-time manager. I worked there for three years. And although I loved the whole social part of it, mm-hmm. like, you know, I, I had a great time with everybody that worked there. I, retail was my background, so I kind of fit right in. Mm-hmm. But there was, you know you know, that proud moment, you know, where you, you finish a job, you install it, it's beautiful. And then I would do like, put, you know, children's merchandise on the wall and go, wow, look at my wall. (laughs) Yeah. There's just not, it's just not the same thing. And I didn't really, I'm following a floor plan. It wasn't my creation, you know, but, um, I don't regret it or anything, but my point is, is had I done that then and had my savings and I continue to pay myself, I wouldn't have probably had to leave, Mm -hmm. you know, and go look for something else. Cause I would have had that money in my, just like Michelle says, it's an engraved in my brain. You got to have three months. You have three months of paychecks. Right. Because it's not quite three months, but I've got some stuff in there to pay myself. And for so many of us, there's only a short period of time where that pipeline sometimes is a little empty and then it quickly fills back up again. But if you don't have, have that cushion there, there's no way to prepare for it. There's no way to be ready for it. And you do kind of hit panic mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no money coming in. What now? So that's, that's an important lesson. I'm, I'm glad that that's something that you can articulate for us. So talk to us a little bit about you know, you said you started with your, your Kenmore and you're starting to get some education from, 
you know, right. uh, leaders within our industry. What did you buy first? What was the first thing that you said, oh, I'm in business. I need to have this. A walking foot. Okay. Had to, I mean, because a lot of the pillows that I was making, the heavy, you know, those heavy cords, mm-hmm. a Kenmore is not cutting it. I mean, no. I, actually, <laughs> I actually ground down the feet. It wasn't even feeding anymore. Oh my so goodness. that machine ended and I got my first commercial machine, which was a walking foot. Mm-hmm. And for a long time, I mean, I sewed, if it wasn't like a, a lacy silk or a sheer, I sewed everything on that. Okay. And I, to tell you the truth, I never even take my cording foot off. I just use it for everything. Mm-hmm. I've heard doing, a lot of people say that. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's, it's a, it's a workhorse. It's mm-hmm. a great solid machine. That was my first commercial machine. And then the second thing I had um, that I did was a table and my table is not like your typical, like you buy this, the plans for the workroom table. Mm-hmm. Everything is like I invented it. So this was, we went to Ikea and Ikea had uh, solid doors, you know, like, um, I don't want to call it fiberglass, like linoleum doors. That oh yeah. Needed. Yeah. And they were, I don't know, $10 a piece. So we ended up getting like five doors, putting them on top of a workhorse, mm-hmm. like workhorses that were left in my basement we, we clamped them together with hinges and all this stuff. And then I got the rolly underlayment. Yes. So that's really my work table is a bunch of doors. Okay. That are laying on top of two by fours clamped together with my underlayment on. And for all these years, it's worked. I was going to say, if it's worked, then that's awesome. I mean, it's, you know, would I love to have a nice solid table with a shelf underneath that I can mm-hmm. wheel around? And then I have a little side table, again, two workhorses that if I do like two widths, I can pull it up. Okay. Everything is just like this little invention, um, but it works. And, and then. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I recently, I was, it's not ready yet that I can share with the world because I, <laughs> <laughs> but I keep wanting, I want to have it videoed. Um, I have way back when I think one of the trade shows, they gave you directions for the uh, lining. Yes. Hand. Yes. So mine is like a big triangle that my dad built and mm-hmm. then it has all the things. So, you know, when you get, I don't know, how do you check your fabric in? Do you have a machine to check your fabric in? I or don't do have struggle? a machine. I have, um, I bought from Rolly company there. Um, it's funny. You said fiberglass earlier. Now that's all I can think about is, uh, they're not plastic, but it's they're, it's cut and their clamps go onto the end of my work table and it's got a U-shaped and a, a or no, it's got okay. holes in it. And I put a rod and I put the fabric on the rod and I can pull the fabric down my table, but it's all manual. It's all, right. yeah. And then I have to roll it from the other end. So it's, it's not the most um, cost effective part of my procedures right. and policies, but yeah. So I can't, I mean, I'm 4'11". So some of those huge bolts of fabric that I got to check in, I struggle. I, I need help. So what I did was I went to Home Depot and I bought these big PVC pipes mm-hmm. and I bought these PVC hooks that I hooked to the, now it's on the side of my rack. Okay. So I put the piece of fat, I put the 23 yard bolt of fabric in there. Right. And I pull it down. I tape it to the PVC pipe. And I kind of made a handle on one side, so it's taut. And now I can just crank it. Oh, my gosh. That's brilliant. It's, it is brilliant. So my son is a videographer, so he, he's, um, I have to plug his business, Riverbank, at riverbankcreative.com if anybody needs a video. Um, I have to get him. He does a lot of my videos for me and my professional, you know, things mm-hmm. that I put on my site. But I want to get him to video it, but it's. Like there's a little, a couple little quirks I have to work out before okay. I feel like I can officially share my invention with the world, but it works for me. I just, okay. I can do it one way and inspect the fabric. And as I'm rolling it, it's rolling on another tube, Okay, but it's a PVC pipe. So Perfect. then I take that PVC pipe, put it on the top, and then I can do my job. I can roll it out. Okay. I haven't figured out how to get it back onto another, uh, cardboard roller tube because it's not long enough oh, i have to be able okay. to crank it right 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 i'm gonna have to send you a picture of my invention oh i can't wait to I'm see like this the, <laughs> it works great i use it all the time and 
it works great. Oh, that's awesome. For, for like $10. That's, that's awesome. I love that. Just a quick heads up. Denise did share a video with me about how she does this, and it is in the March-April 2022 edition of the Drapery and Design Digital Digest. You can check the show notes for a link to that magazine edition. I want to jump in and take a moment to thank the sponsors who make it possible for me to bring you the podcast each week. My sponsors are people in in the industry that I have personally had a connection to, purchased from, or use their services. So it makes it really easy for me to tell you about them and the great things that they have to offer. Because I feel so strongly about education in our industry, I'm thrilled that as the owner of the Curtains and Soft Furnishings Resource Library, I can use the resources of the library to help support the podcast. The library hosts the industry's largest curated collection of educational resources for the custom home furnishings professional. Membership to the library gives you access to a wealth of downloadable reference materials, videos, live events, as well as a community of support to help you develop your design, sales, and fabrication skills, and to grow or start a business. Join the library today at csfrl.org. Angels Linings would like to invite you to become part of their family. With reputable lining comes exceptional customer service. Trust them with your linings like I do. You get two Tootsie Pops with every bolt of lining you receive. For smiles, satisfaction, and a sugar kick all around, call Angels Linings at 1-800-450-9368. The Workroom Channel is the premier online training provider for professional fabrication skills. Go to theworkroomchannel.com to browse the selection of anytime access courses created by industry experts, watch detailed demonstration videos, download companion materials, and participate in private course discussion boards with your instructor and classmates from around the world. Start your course path today at theworkroomchannel.com. If you've listened to the podcast, you know how much I've learned from Michelle Williams, and I think most of my guests have mentioned taking at least one of her classes or gotten coaching from her. Her business is Scarlet Thread Consulting. Michelle loves to work with creative business owners to help them understand all aspects of their business and to use their gifts and talents to make it profitable. Michelle is a strategic profitability coach certified in the Profit First methodology, and she can be reached at scarletthreadconsulting.com. I've also mentioned my membership with the WCAA, And I'm now a gold level sponsor where education, networking, visibility, and industry discounts are just a few of the benefits that are offered to our members. The window covering association of America is the only national nonprofit trade association that's dedicated to the window coverings industry and the dealers, decorators, workrooms, designers, and installers that make up our membership. Join today at WCAA.org. WCAA, where you are never in business alone. I've also been extremely fortunate to be able to work with Merrill Y. Landis LTD. It's a family-owned and operated custom workroom and product distribution company to the trade with over 70 years of experience. And in addition to their custom work, they offer a wide variety of decorative drapery hardware, They offer Stout and Flare 21 fabrics. They have Roman Shade operating systems and assembly kits. They have motorization and workroom supplies, and they serve both designers and workrooms. And you can check out the MYL Advantage at MYLLTD.com. Okay, so clearly you are an entrepreneur because you've invented things and you've come up with things. (laughs) When... You know, I didn't ask you about this, but I saw something on Facebook that's making me ask you this question. How did you learn to sew? Well, my grandmother sewed, Mm -hmm. my mother sewed, my aunt sewed. I worked in a fabric store um, when I was in high school. So I've always loved to sew. Like I used to make my clothes. And when I was at this fabric store, it was when like the beginning of the, they had a home deck section come in. Okay. So it was kind of like the beginning of the home deck fabrics. Yes. 
I, I even high school, you know, we used to make all our own little, those, do you remember the wrap shorts? And, mm-hmm. and I, and I just always enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, so when we got married, I couldn't wait to, you know, make all the curtains from my house. And I made our curtains for our, ha- our college apartment. So it was always there, you know, okay. always okay. something I enjoyed. And I know that you've worked on some projects with your mom, which I'll ask you about in a little bit, but I had a feeling that, you know, it was, it was a definitely a family thing for you guys. Mm -hmm. So you've made a lot of effort recently to, um, work on your business. And I, I saw it because you wanted to sit down and talk with me. I saw it because you joined, joined the library. I saw it because you took Michelle's class and I can see the things that you're doing. And that impresses me and just puts me in awe because I, you know, some of us who are getting closer to retirement as opposed to anything else, there can be a point where you're just tired and you don't want to do things anymore, but you are still so excited. And I'm not implying that you're ready for retirement, but you're excited about learning things. Is, have you always been that way? When it comes to this stuff? Yeah. Okay. Like, I cannot wait. I can't wait to go to the conference. And I, I swear every year that there was one, I'm like, I'm going, I'm <laughs> going this year. And I always yell at Teresa and you're going with me. And she. <laughs> You know, you're coming with me. And I just, for whatever reason, I never, I never set aside that money to go. Mm -hmm. Now Mm -hmm. I have it and they cancel the conference. I know. (laughs) We have to wait till next year for the conference now. (laughs) Yeah. So I, and then the year there was a uh, IWCE conference in Nashville and I was there the week after it. Like I had just, like we were there on vacation the week after the conference. Like, oh no. But you know, you get... Those things just pump me up. I mean, even if I take like, did you ever take Elkie's class on the workroom channel? I sure did. <laughs> you get out of that thing and all you want to do is make a Roman shade. You can't wait to just make a Roman shade. Exactly. And anything like that. It just gets you so excited. And I was thinking the other day, like our industry and everybody in it, isn't it kind of funny how excited we get of watching a piece of flat fabric go up and down? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. That is a really funny way to put it, Denise. Yes. A piece of flat fabric going up and down the window. Well, if it's motorized or or is it a ripped Roman shade or is it the buckram Roman shade or is it like all of these? You're right. We are a bunch of geeks, aren't we? (laughs) Yes. Or we see panels go like that. Yes. Yes. Open and close across a window and we're thrilled. And and you mentioned about how elaborate the trims were. Now you get a flat Greek tr- um, key trim, and we're drooling. Yeah, and it's it's a piece of flat fabric, and we're so yep. excited by it. But yep. it is. I mean, they say that the the details are what make it, and those are the things I think that we see when totally. we look at different things. Yeah, there's so many pictures. It's like I I want to post or. You know, when you send somebody a job and sometimes you're like, oh, I can't post that picture. Like, yeah. they didn't dress that or the, the crease yes, was there. Yes, and everybody's yes. going to nitpick at it. I can't post that picture. Yeah. yeah, I struggle with that one myself. There have been a lot of jobs I've had installed and I go, yeah, I can't get a good enough picture that I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. So for someone who's been as enthusiastic as you have been, it almost feels like a silly question, but it's still one of my favorite ones to ask. Have you ever considered quitting? Well, I think once, and it was way back, we were living in Livingston and I had to do a job in New York City. And I don't have ever done any jobs in New York City, not. but it is, it's hard. You know, you it's expensive. There's, it's hard to park. And then you got to lug all that stuff from wherever you're parked. You got to go in the service elevator. It doesn't fit at the time. I didn't have an installer. So I was installing. You did not want me installing. I'll have a hole the size of a golf ball on your wall in five minutes. But these were concrete, they're concrete walls. It just, I wasn't strong enough to do it. But this one time I had, you know, my grandma came, we were watching the kids, we were working on this project. You know, I had done all this prep, got into New York, 
lugged all the stuff in, put it up, and the um, the client came in because I was working for a decorator, and she walked in the room and she went, "What is that?" Oh was, my goodness! I had just spent like hours and hours trying to put this up and. And I'm telling her what it was. And she's like, well, that's not what I ordered. She was very dramatic. Well, that's what I thought you ordered. This mm-hmm. is, you know, it was, it was early on in, you know, in my business. But after that, I came, I can remember coming home and I wrote on the blackboard, I hate my job. And oh. I didn't hate my job. I love my job. But it was so much work. I had to take it down trudge it all the way back home, you know, the traffic, the tunnel, the, the thing. And that, that I think I really, that was probably the only time I thought about quitting. Okay. Even when I went to the gap, I really didn't quit. I was still continuing. If I right. got a job, I would do it. Right. Right. So I'm curious when you got that job reinstalled, did you feel any better about it or were you just glad to be done with that job? Um, I was, I I did feel better about it. It was just some little like tweaks that had to be made. It was a scalloped sheer Roman shade. And, um, there was, you know, the weight rod, I guess, wasn't in the right place. And on the very, very edges, it kind of came in, Mm -hmm. you know, and again, like today, I probably wouldn't know, I would know how to correct that problem. And I may not have not, I just didn't, but there were side panels, like, you know, covering it, it operated beautifully. I think I was just, that was like a, a yes. A yes. And that, and that was somebody who didn't treat you with respect and how uh, she talked yeah. with you. Yes. So you mentioned learning something from each of the designers that you've worked with over the years. What, what do you think is the most valuable lesson you learned from any of them? Communication. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. They're like, uh, one of your questions is, um, how do you handle a failure? Mm-hmm. Like a failure and a mistake. A mistake is a mistake. Buck it up, move on, mm-hmm. pay what you have to pay. If you have to buy more trim, that that's done. Yeah. A failure to me, isn't something like a job that never went in or had to be returned to me. The failure was like a severed relationship. Okay. To me, that's kind of what I think of as being a failure. And there was one designer in particular um, that I worked with who, again, so much talent, like could, she was, she was incredible in every, every way. But when it came to communication, it was the the hardest thing. Okay. And, And that kind of, in a nutshell, I would say is what caused our relationship to fail. And it took me a long time to get over it. And, and to this day, it's like, you know, I wish we could just, you know, after all these years, pick up where we left off because I loved doing, I loved doing the work that she gave me, you know, because okay. it, it was different and yeah. she was busy and she, she did model homes and, um, but it was just that, that communication. And, and another thing is, um, you know, you have to talk to people nice. Yeah. It's, how about that? Like it could, she could be really a terrible job, but you know, you don't have to scream it at somebody. You could just, just talk nice to people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I just was expecting this or, you know, it's your, totally it, it, that's exactly what I was thinking. Like, or, or even to come up to you and say, this is not at all was I was ex- what I was expecting. You did a beautiful job, but here's where I think th- that you would have had a whole different reaction and response to that particular situation still would have had to take it home still would have had to do things with it but but your um your feelings about it would have been completely different right that's a tough one denise it really is but it is like communication is huge a picture is worth a thousand words i don't know what you're thinking you could be thinking black i could be thinking white yes just draw it for me so we're on the same page how it's not that hard uh, not too not too long ago, much closer for my comfort, um, I had an absolute disaster with some fabric and, and it was an accident. The fabric got damaged and I had a call person I was fabricating for and let her know. And I have to tell you that, I, I mean, I was ready to throw up. I was so upset about this. And there was a deadline that I was now going to miss because the fabric was damaged and I had to order new fabric. 
But I called and I said, here's what happened. Here's what I did to fix it. That didn't work. So I have ordered new fabric and it will be here on such and such a date and I can have it ready for installation by. And she was lovely and kind. And her last words to me when we hung up were, be kind to yourself. It was an accident. And all I kept thinking was this, I could be ending this phone call crying. I I could be ending this phone call saying, that's it. I'm done. I'm not making any more window treatments after this. But just those couple of words made such a difference to me and how she handled it that, that you're right. She was kind, she was kind to me Mm -hmm. and didn't make, she didn't demean me or belittle me or make me feel bad. I trust me. I could not possibly feel worse than I felt at that moment. Right. And you paid. So I thought. Or so I thought, had she been nasty to me, I absolutely could have right. felt worse. And you're, it's your, is it your famous quote that I uh, love to hear with the feather? Beat yourself up with a feather and not a board? No, that's Michelle's voice in your oh. head again. <laughs> I probably repeated it, but that's Michelle talking to you. No, I'm the one who hits myself with a two by four over and over again. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, sometimes when you make those horrible mistakes, it just, you learn from it. It makes you even more careful. Yes. You know, yes. like you just do. Yeah. So aside from that particular job, what have been some of the biggest challenges in general for you and your business? Um, I did have an answer for this. I have to. Okay. Well, the other thing that I would say too, keeping my, keeping that workflow, that pipeline filled. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you always have a, a next job lined up. Um, I mean, I think the, the, the social media that's going on, you know, that you were saying like you all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I, I can, I come on, I can I like, see that you've stepped it up, stepped it up. I, I don't know why I always just kind of had this fear that in my, I don't want people to think, am I showing off? Am I? Is, is Facebook the right place for this? You know? Mm-hmm. So I think after seeing, especially when COVID hit is when I think a lot of people started like, you know, Facebook and, mm-hmm. and Instagram. Um, but it really does, you know, it kind of gets your work out there. And then I think too, you know, people get ideas from what you're posting and they realize, yes. you know, that's what I want. That's what I'm looking for. I want that exact same thing in blue. So mm-hmm. it's kind of helped them in a way. Okay. So that's a great way to reframe yeah. that when you feel like you're bragging or, or it's not it, like yes. the intent, it's yeah. not the intent it, you know, but it's, um, it, it is, I think important to get it out there for other people to get ideas. You know, you go on Pinterest to get ideas. And, right. So why not be the one who provides the ideas? Right. 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 Exactly. <laughs> Do, have you ever felt as a single person workroom, have you ever felt like you weren't prepared to handle the amount that could come in if you were on social media? Cause I've thought, I felt that way sometimes. Like if mm-hmm. I overdo it, how am I going to handle the work that comes in? Meryl Landis. Yeah. <laughs> help. <laughs> um, I've, they're, they're wonderful. I've, I've worked with them. Um, and, and usually I'll, I'd ask, I'd, ask for their help if I have something that's too big for my table. Okay. Like two story panels. I've tried to invent, I've tried so many times to hook tables up to my tables to do the two story panel. It's, it's too much. Um, triple withers. I would call my triple withers. Mm-hmm. That's the limit. I can't do anything more than three with. Otherwise okay. I'll send it out. Okay. Um, but you know, I'll even fan fold a triple width. It'll come out beautiful. I love fan folding. I think it's so much I fun. Do I do too. It's love very it satisfying. Like, yeah. it, it is. And it makes install so much easier mm-hmm. too. Um, a couple other, you know, um, Drapery Palace, Daria. I don't know if you know who she is. I She's don't. helped me out quite a bit too. Um, and I, I really only reach out to them if I get something that I can't handle. Okay. I, you know, I'm too bombarded, but it hasn't been bad. I'm trying very good to keep my work on a schedule and not over deadline myself there. Okay. Oh, good for you. Denise, what would you say is the greatest success in your business? Having repeat customers. Oh, that is a good one. Happy happy repeat customers. You know, it makes you feel so good when they're so happy and they come back and refer you, you know, 
you know, just a good feeling. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So we talked about the class that you took with Michelle. Are you a book reader? Do you like to read business books? Is there anything in particular particular that you've read that's changed how you do business or has influenced you much? Well, some, not so much reading, um, but the podcast. Like uh, that, this has all been new to me this year, honestly. Or okay. Like maybe towards the end, of, a little end of last year. Um, so I have, I'm still catching up, you know? And I just think from everybody's input, I mean, the, the interview, the podcast that you did with Beth Hodges, I got to, you know, when after she passed away and you redid that one, how much information, you know, I got just out of that. Yeah. Listening to that. Ann Johnson's one is fantastic, you know. Um, and then even on, you know, Michelle's, like all of her uh, profit is a choice um her success stories ones, just seeing all the tips and tricks, you know, how people handle their organization in the workroom and, and mm-hmm. things, you know, I get more out of that than I do by reading. Okay. Um, although I do love a paper copy like Elkie's Roman shades and mm-hmm. downloaded Susan's Buckram Roman shades. And, mm-hmm. you know, I like to flip through all that. I do want to get her book. And I still, after all these years, I want Kitty Stein's book so bad. I just, I think that's going to be on my Christmas list. This and year. and honestly, after all these years, it's still going to be helpful because you're in that mode where you are willing to learn something from everything. Yeah. So I remember early on in my business that I was very anxious to learn things, but I also found that things took me a while to make. So therefore, sometimes the, the time that I had available for learning was not always what I wanted it to be. I was hungry for knowledge, but couldn't always make the time. And I know podcasts are easy to listen to while you're doing other things, but how, how do you make the time? Because I know you have delved into the library and I know that you've taken classes. You're making time to work on this part of your business. How are you doing that and still making the things in your workroom that you have to make? I think I do. Well, the podcast, I'm, if I have to travel a lot of my jobs are about an hour and 15, an hour and a half away. Okay. So, I mean, in the car, I'm listening to them. Mm-hmm. While I'm working, I'm listening to them. I've been trying to do all, like, the WCA web- webinars. So, I'll just keep that on while, you know, I'm working on something. Mm-hmm. It's If you take the class and you learn how to do it, it makes when you actually go do the work quicker. Yes. You know, like, I'm a huge, huge fan of a mock-up. If I am unsure... I have so much scrap fabric down there. Mm-hmm. It'll save me time in the long run to just do it out of whatever fabric that I have down there. If I have to make a balance and I don't know where I want something centered or, uh, you know, like the, a, a huge struggle that I have right now. And I, I need to write the system down is if I'm doing a Roman shade, relaxed or flat, whatever it is, and whatever size banding I got to have peeking out the bottom. Yeah. How many times am I going to have to reinvent that wheel to figure out how much room do I need to allow to put that trim on? Like, yeah. what is wrong with me? I don't. So, I I think some of us just. I had this conversation with somebody this weekend. There are some things that visually I only need to see once. There are some things I only need to do once, and other things I feel like my brain just will not capture it. Mm-hmm. It's and, and like and it's fat. <laughs> yes. And, and I feel like I'm reinventing the wheel. And sometimes partway through, I'll think, all right, right now I have to stop and, and do this or this so that the next time. But it doesn't happen to me very often. Those are things that make me feel like I'm not that smart. Do you know what I mean? Like what? Because you may not have to do that for another seven months. Yeah. Like you'll do 20 Roman shades and then I won't get a call from a Roman shade for a year. And I now forgot what I taught myself. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Denise, do you use much technology in your business? Well, my phone, mm-hmm. my, um, my newest thing that I got a mother's day last year was an iPad with the eye pencil. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you how many jobs I've gotten just because I can give somebody a quick visual with that eye pencil. Yes. Um, I think it's, it's amazing. I mean, I still struggle. Like I'm not like so, so techy. Okay. Uh, if this, the silliest little thing, if it just meant, you know, we'll just tap this here. I don't know to just tap that there. Okay. Gotcha. So, like my kids will get really frustrated with me. I'll say, I can't make this 
go away. And they just come up and touch the screen and it goes away. Yeah. Because I didn't know to do that. Right. So, I mean, I'm learning how to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I asked you once before, you had mentioned, is it Evernote or OneNote? Yeah, Evernote, yeah. Evernote, because when you were at the class and other people too, I noticed everybody's taking notes on their iPad. Mm-hmm. I cannot figure out how to make my phone a hotspot so that I can use my iPad someplace when I'm not in internet. So okay. I, when you say techie, I can't, I don't know why I can't figure that out. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to propose a little challenge for you since you're delving into the accounting and you are making sure that you get this work on that for a little while. And then I'm going to challenge you to get a little more uh, comfortable with the technology. And I will be Got happy it. to show you how to connect to a hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can socially distance for coffee somewhere and I will show you how to do that. <laughs> All right. Because I want to go to, I want to go like to a client's house with my iPad, take a picture of their window and write the measurements yeah. on it. You and can it do always, these things. I promise you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I can. All right. And the really sad thing is, is that if uh, the custom workroom conference was ha- happening, I'd be able to show you in, in the class mm-hmm. that I, I'm doing and you're, I'm not going to make you wait a whole year before okay. I show you that. <laughs> I promise. Okay, good. Uh, what three business items could you not live without? Probably not your phone because you uh, just said you well, really that's use a, it. That's a given. Yeah. You can't, I don't know how you can't have your phone. A table. I don't know how anybody can operate without mm-hmm. a, a big table a steam iron. I don't have a do fix, but I have had, I, my Rowenta steam iron, I have it on a track mm-hmm. that goes over my table. The same exact thing. Can't, I can't live without that. Right. I right. Can't work without that. Um, and I do a ton of corn. How could, I, I you have to have a, um, pneumatic. Air compressor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A air compressor with the staple gun. Yeah. Because um, I agree just with having you. a hand stapler and, you know, you got to get through all those lazy, you can't do no. that. And not even an electric stapler is okay. No. no. You got to have a good one. What is your favorite thing to make in your workroom? Pillows, panels, and shades. Okay. I, you were yeah, very specific the, there. <laughs> because I'm telling you, every time I'm, I, I feel like I know all these questions because as you're asking other guests, I'm going, okay, okay. I'm, I'm I, mine is pillows. <laughs> yeah, I, I, this is what I'm going to say. Denise, do you ever sew just for pleasure? I do. not, But you know what I do? I do. But I kick myself because when I sew for me for pleasure, I always take shortcuts. Because oh I'm gosh. rushing through to try to get it done. Thank you for saying that because I was so annoyed with myself. I made myself a dress recently. I have not made any clothing for such a long time. And I was starting to take some shortcuts because I wanted to be done. Done. Instead of enjoying the process of sewing for me. Mm-hmm. And I did slow myself down, but I don't think I really verbalized what it was I was doing. Thank you for saying yeah. that. That makes so much sense to me. Yeah, I just recently committed the eternal workroom owner's sin. What was that? From Marshalls. You bought what? Ready maids from Marshalls. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but can you see them? They're really pretty, and I'm oh, gonna. They are. I actually had to pleat them at the top, and I had to hem them. So there's a beautiful hem on the bottom. And then I'm going to put navy blue trim down the lead edge so you don't see that. This is my daughter's old room. Okay, so that's a really good conversation. Not everything has to be done exactly one way. And if do you have to have custom window treatments in every room of your home? I want them. You now have (laughs) semi-custom. I have semi-custom. If I didn't tell you, you would not. I I actually was going to ask you what fabric it was when we were done with the podcast because it looked, they look lovely to me. Aren't they so pretty? And and I've noticed there have been a couple of people recently who have posted some combinations of custom work and semi-custom work for their customers. And I think that if that's a, a, a niche that we can fit into and we can fill for people, I, you know, I don't particularly care for working with ready-mades, but I have some of those in my home too, because mm-hmm. I needed to get something up on the window for goodness sakes. And I just didn't make the time for myself. But I think that's a great thing to do because now you're done. 
Yeah, I mean, ready-mades are fine as long as you iron them and you don't put them up with the cardboard creases in them. And that, you know, a lot of times the hems are a little funky. You know, they have that giant smile. Yeah. And if you steam them out really nicely, you add some trim to them, some of them are lined. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, they're not all that terrible. Right. <laughs> they're not all that terrible. <laughs> they're not. They're not all that terrible. So I do know there's some a little other sewing that you've done. You helped your mom make some <laughs> bags. Now, your mom did the needlework. The needle point. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. They were just beautiful. Oh, good. And what yep. a nice project for you to work on with your mom. Yep. So she did <clears throat> She did this needlepoint sampler and she wanted to turn it into like a carpet bag mm-hmm. um, so that she could bring like her bigger projects to her needlepoint class. Mm-hmm. So she picked out the fabric and, um, and we just kind of, you know, winged it. And she, you know, bought those dowels and, yeah. and then I just kind of finished it off for her. Um, so we did that. I'm trying to think of what other project that I made. Uh, I'll finish some of her little needlepoint projects off, like turn them into pillows. Oh or, my gosh, that's what yeah. a nice thing to be able to do. I love that. Yeah. She likes to come downstairs and tinker and be down there with me. Oh, that's awesome. Get mad that all the pins are all on the floor. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is what it is. Don't criticize how I clean my work, <laughs> Mom. <laughs> I'll clean it after this project is done. I promise you. <laughs> Denise, what do you do extremely well? Um, well, I, th- I, I think that I relate to my customers really well, and I go above and beyond trying to help them mm-hmm. uh, pick the right thing. And, and sometimes, even though I might not, you know, always charge a design fee, or ch- I don't charge them for this, that, and the other thing, and, and I think that's what helps them come back for repeat business because they know that, I'm going to help them find what they want. Okay. You know, I'm going to, if something isn't right, I'm going to help them, you know, get it right. And okay. Uh, that's, that's a good skill. I think it is. I mean, I don't, I really, I talk to people nicely. I, you know, I help them. I'm not rude. And mm-hmm. um, sometimes I get, you know, upset that I don't let it, you know, show to mm-hmm. them. So what I do you not do that well? What do you not do so well? Task wise, a- anything. I, you know what? I do. I have. I do have an answer for this one. Um, well, number one, I, I keep mentioning accounting because accounting isn't math. It's like word problems. It's oh, figure- absolutely. So, and there's a lot to know. And I so that leads me to the other thing. What I don't do so well is I don't feel like I document a lot of things, which okay. is why I have to keep reinventing the wheel on these things. And um, if I, if I could just document some of the things that I do and help me remember it, I, it'll speed up some systems and, and processes. Okay. Okay. But those, yeah, those things. All right. What about you would surprise people? Well, <laughs> we talked about this a little bit. I think you know, a lot of people think I look a lot younger than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I'm 54. Which, uh, yeah. I, not even, <laughs> I, I wonder sometimes if people have a distorted view of people who are petite, that there's that a... they can't do it. Well, but, but literally, facially, you don't look your age. You do look do. significantly <laughs> younger than that. But I do sometimes think one of my daughters is really petite And I think sometimes she's been mistaken for younger than she is. And I think it's that height has a lot to do with it. Right. But once you pass like 30 and 40, your face does start to change, but you don't look your age at all. So uh, I, that, it, I do not have gray in a lot of places here. I am gray. Yeah, well, in this business, I think we probably yeah. have more than some other. Yeah. And even like with cornice boards and stuff, it's like I'll, you know, go and get it out of the car and, you know, we're like, oh, no, no, you know, let me get this. It's like, well, I can get it. I made it. Yeah, right. I got, I, I got it here, I by the way. <laughs> got all the wood, sawed it, put it together. You know, I, I made it. I can handle getting yeah. it. I just may not be able to get it up on the wall, but. Right. <laughs> it may be bigger it. than I am, but I can still handle it. <laughs> right. In what ways do you think you're resilient? I figure things out. It like sounds I, like it. <laughs> I will figure it out. I mean, if we talk about, you know, like a piece of fabric that got damaged, um, 
there have been times, you know, where you have to suck it up, obviously, yeah. and yeah. get, you know, you got to get new, but I will figure out a way to get that glue out. I don't know if you keep, um, my new best friend is a bottle of acetone nail polish remover in the workroom. What does that help you with? You can get permanent marker out of white linen. Really? Oh, yeah. Just keep dabbing it. And I mean, I had red permanent magic marker on this white linen job that I was working oh, on. Oh, my goodness. Smack dab in the middle of, the, of, the, um, of what I was working on. You would never know it came oh, out. Oh, wow. No, I do not. I, I know I have mineral spirits and I have acetone in my workroom, but I don't mm-hmm. have nail polish remover. Yeah. And if you keep rubbing it and even take out, you know, the fringe adhesive. Okay. Yeah. I will just, you know, figure out, we'll, we'll make it work. I'll, I'll get it to work somehow. That's a good skill. I like that. Mm -hmm. What traits do you think an entrepreneur has to have in order to be successful? Patience, good communication skills, good customer service skills. Um, yeah, I mean... Okay, those are good. Yeah, definitely. So, especially because we've now talked about you being on social media. What mm-hmm. accounts do you have? I'll, I'll put it, links to everything in the show notes, but where are you on social media? So I am on Facebook under Denise Candy Custom Sewing. Um, and then on Instagram, it's called at Bound at the Themes, all one okay. word. And that came from um, my son is a, in, you know a videographer, he went to school for film and he at at a class project had to make a video. Um, And it was really all about the ties between, you know, my grandmother and me and sewing and family. Mm -hmm. And it was titled Bound at the Seams. Oh, I love it. I really wish I could go through the trouble and make that my business name. But, you know, it's a lot of a lot of paperwork and all that to change a business name. To so, change a business, yeah. Yeah, so I just called my Instagram page Bound at Themes. Okay, I love that. Well, I'll put all links to all of that in the show notes. Okay. So, Denise, for someone who has been as thirsty for knowledge as you have been and who's really actively looked for new and better ways to do things, what advice would you have for someone who's new in the business or someone who's been in business for a while or both? Um, cuts, or I'm sorry, like measure 16 times before you cut. <laughs> Be very careful with what you do with glue. <laughs> um, and get as much education as you can. Like, especially now with all the things that you could do at your home, mm-hmm. all the class, even on the, the custom resource, li- the, the resource library, all the cla- all the stuff that is on there. I mean, you can learn everything on there. Mm-hmm. You can learn how to thread your machine on there. You right. can, it's just Terry Boozer. I've actually called several times because I recently acquired a blind hemmer. I was always like, I don't need one. I do all my hemming on the table I'm by hand. Mm-hmm. And um, my cousin had somebody that was getting rid of a blind hemmer. And I thought, oh, you know what? Let me go look at it. It is so much fun. Like, I love it. Okay. You know, I mean, this big, clunky, giant, solid machine to do one thing. Yeah, just it has one job. One job. One job. <laughs> and it's been a lot of fun getting the, the hang of it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it was a little quirky in the beginning, but I wasn't, you know, used to it. But I really, I love that now. Mm-hmm. And all I do is just my bottom hems. Mm-hmm. Everything else I do on the table, but it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, But Denise, I think that sums up everything is your attitude of it's been fun to learn it. Usually when people talk about their blind hammers, they either love them or hate them. Mm -hmm. And even when they love them, they still have a love hate relationship with them. But even just your attitude of it's been fun to learn it, I think really just defines how you're doing Mm -hmm. things in a nutshell. And it has been just such a nice pleasure for me to spend the time with you today and get to know you even better. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I was so excited when I got your email. Good. (laughs) I seem to have had a run recently on really enthusiastic and really energized workroom owners. And I, I love that. It is like a shot of adrenaline for me personally to interview someone like Denise who is so excited and so energetic and so ready to 
delve into her business and do even more than she already has. So uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing from Denise. I hope it was fun for you to learn something from her. And I want to tell you that I appreciate you listening. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.